At this stage, you're probably thinking this looks like a plumber's pipe cutting tool. Now, we're not a plumbing channel, so what have we got this tool for? It's actually a steel armoured cable stripper. Uh, that's what it says on the side of the sax tool. Uh, and we, uh, we had this teased to us before, didn't we, Gary? Yeah, give it to me. Yeah, we had Eddie from Pegasus Electrical up and he was using it and we tried to probably coax it off him so we could have a look at it. But believe it or not, he took it back with him when he left. He did, so we had to get our own uh, and we got it because we're doing an armoured cable install as part of our EV charger install series. Uh, check that out because we've used that tool in this where we had to join this armoured cable to a flexible rubber cable with a new type of cable joint. And as a result, we passed it over to Ross, our tame electrician, to do all the hard work, but he missed out one absolute differentiator on this tool compared to what you would think might look like a pipe stripper. So what we did does, we gave it to you, Gordon, and the first one you made off, we recorded it to see how good the tool is. We like a challenge, so you're in with a 16 millimeter squared, five core EV Ultra cable. Well, that's actually six cores carry because it's got a data cable in there as well. And that's got eight cores in it, so that's 13, Gordon. All oh, right, well, there's always someone who wants to be smarter than anyone. Anyway, it's at the top end of the range for this cutter. So this cable is 28 millimeter diameter. The cable uh, tool itself will handle up to 36 millimeters. Okay, so we're going around now. Just tightening as you go, or do you stop and tighten? Ah, you're a stop and tightener, are you? Yeah, and you're going to tell yeah. me you just carry you just yeah, a lot I, of smooth I, operation. Yeah, I try and twist as I go, and it's now got a feel, I and mean, you've got to feel it digging into the actual steel wire armoured in order that you know they're cutting. So it's a different feel maybe than a hacksaw, is that right? Yeah, different feel for hacksaw, and a different feel from those hacksaw based splitting tools as well. So you, you can't hear the cord being cut, so you've got to feel that. And that's what I'm getting the feel for, and you'll notice that the actual cut into the armour is incredibly thin. Yeah compared to a hacksaw based cutter. Okay, so you're backing it off now, what are you doing? Yeah, here's the clever Ooh. bit. It obviously here's the second function of the tool, turn it at a right angle, and then you can use the rollers in another way, and then just pull it down to remove the outer jacket. Now, looks like I'm doing it slow, it's because I am. Uh, it's got to be really firmly into the tool, and you know when you've got it right, because it feels like you're going over a rumble strip in your car. Okay, and you're never going to cut through the steel armoured because obviously they're wrapped around, so you're never running down an individual armoured that could obviously damage the bedding material. That's come off really easily. None of them have fallen off, so we're going to do the breaking off method. Yeah, now, yeah, haven't, in hindsight, I probably would have gone a bit deeper, so I might revisit that. Okay, uh, but it is the first one you've done, so we have filmed um, it to see how we get on with it from straight out of the box. I would like to say I'm an occasional stripper, normally in the clean coat territory myself, pointing, and, uh, pointing at other people doing it, but um, yeah, I found this, I, 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 yeah, I, I like this tool from the uh, first time I used it. That's broke off a treat, they're nice and clean, so I don't think we're going to have an issue putting the gland on. So we're now out with a knife in order to remove it, so we can, oh, you're back no, in. Back in again, so again, just see if we can remove the jacket yeah, in the area where we put the armoured cable gland on. So again, just a, a quick run round. Don't need to go as deep this time because we don't want to uh, cut into the uh, armour itself. And then we like this, don't we, where we just turn it round and run it down. Yeah, just again, that little 90 degree uh, turn around to use the, uh, the rollers the other way. And it just pops off the end and then we break it away and then we can put the gland. We're not going to put a gland on, and we've done that in previous videos, but there we are. So that's ready and prepared for a gland. But we did talk about the bedding material, didn't we? Yeah, so I wouldn't use this tool to run down the bedding material purely because the bedding material changes thickness as it goes around the cable, because it's not really, uh, you know, people sometimes say it's insulation. It's not, it is just bedding material. Okay, and then you could slice into the conductor and then obviously that's caused you a problem. Yeah. Drop down steel armoured sizes. Now this, yeah, is, so this, this looks tiny. This is a three core, 1.5 millimeter uh, armored uh, so the diameter of this is just under 12 millimeters and that's it the, 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 the quarter bottom end of the range for this tool okay so same process as we did before we've speeded it up slightly so we've uh, dug into the steel wire armored we're going to run it down again you see how deep that blade's gone in there and obviously this will be firm when you put it yeah you can tell that's quite firm isn't yeah it? and you can feel it sort of bumping along the the cores as you go down there say like a rumble strip and then just that last bit's always important as you run it off, because that's the bit you want to break and so split it open. And then we'll see those armoureds break away nice and easily as well. So both ends of the scale here, a large one and a small one. I always find it more difficult to make off a smaller steel armour with a hacksaw than to do a larger one where you can get a senior hacksaw and really get some purchase as you bite into them. Yeah, and, and, and I thought looking at the tool that it was more built for larger cables, but actually it's done a pretty good job on this small cable. Yeah, look at that end, that's ready 
for the Glen now to go on. So you're back in for another attempt at the five core 16 millimeter squared one? Yeah, so I just thought I'd try and go a bit deeper this time in terms of the, um, in terms of the cutting. So you've, you've turned it a little bit more and gone, yeah, you can see there deeper there, yeah. okay. So it'll be and interesting some feedback from anyone who's using this tool as to how they judge exactly how far into the cable to go with that when they're uh, doing that first job. But look at this stuff. Oh, right, okay. So yeah, a lot of them have broke off and that's a, a lot easier to go off. So you just gently scuff the bedding material there. We haven't gone through it, so that's probably exactly right. Oh, little top tip there. Yeah, just rolled it back. Just to, obviously, it's, yeah, it is that last bit that causes you all the, uh, all the trouble. Yeah, so you can see there, probably, yeah, probably just went a touch too deep on it and gone all the way through the course. And you can feel when it goes through the course. What's going on here? Uh, plastic conduit. Okay. So, so there's some heavy, uh, heavy gauge plastic conduit, so the, the, the thickest of the plastic conduits available. Uh, so again, same principle, just run it round. So we've got one tool to do both jobs now. So whereas we might have a, a slice for an armoured and then obviously some sort of cutting tool for conduit, yeah. we've actually got it out of one tool. That means one tool in the toolbox, nice clean end as well. So that's that cut. Hang on. What's this? Copper conduit there. Copper conduit. What yeah. size is this copper this conduit? This comes in uh, 15 and 22 millimetres, Gareth. Okay. So uh, it cuts copper conduit as well, which yeah. is handy. Yeah. I think this conduit can also carry water and gas, I've been told. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That's clever. How would you join it together? Uh, the soldered accessories go with this. So, okay. Yeah. So again, you can use it for this copper conduit. And makes a nice clean end on that as well. So very versatile, this sax. I'm sure it hasn't gone unnoticed, the fact that you wore gloves throughout that to keep your well moisturized hands nice and soft. But off camera, I've also been using the sacks for steel armored and conduits. And from my teaching experience, if we would have had these in a college setting, it would have made it incredibly easy for students to make off those steel armors. Because actually going around with a hacksaw and actually re-meeting your starting point is quite challenging, especially when you're starting out, making off the first few ends. There's no way you'd let students use these, Gary. They're far too, far too easy. Uh, it'd be interesting to get uh, your opinion because obviously there's a lot of other uh, preparation tools for uh, steel wide armour on the market that do the, uh, the scoring of the armour. Usually they're sort of hacksaw based and I've got one and yeah, I quite like it actually. I prefer this one actually. And, and you're not a fan of those tools, are you? I've, I've got given one and I just can't. I call it a toffee twister. Every time it just digs and it doesn't do what it suggests it's going to do, and it certainly doesn't then split the PVC to allow you to get into those armors either, does yeah, it? That's the, that's the useful bit. Uh, then people are probably thinking, what about the blades? So you can get replacement cutting blade uh, for this tool. Uh, be interesting, this has been around for quite a while. Yeah. I think it's, it's about 10 years it's been on the market. We haven't seen it much on social media. Hopefully we'll see it a bit more now we've uh, featured it here, but it'd be great to get some feedback as to if you're using this, how long those uh, cutting blades last and yeah, so how often you replace them or any other top tips you've got for using the tool, in particular that, how, that tactile bit for how far into the cable you cut to get the perfect cut.